Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you have just stumbled across this video on the internet. My name is Sky Dumont. I am a worship leader, a vocal coach, and an opera singer. And guys, I'm so excited about today's video. It's something that I've been wanting to make for such a long time. These are going to be practical tips that you can implement today if you are a worship leader, a worship pastor, somebody in worship leadership, and you're wanting to protect your voice, steward your gift well, and avoid vocal fatigue. This video is actually inspired by several conversations that I've gotten to have lately with friends and colleagues who are also in this field. Um, and we were just opening up the conversation about the concern of how vocally exhausted that we would get after Sunday services getting nodes, getting polyps, getting vocal injuries, and having to be on vocal rest, having to step away for a season, having to step away permanently because of it. And to me, that is heartbreaking. And so I wanted to share um, some of my knowledge and what I've learned from my own experience in this field to hopefully help aid in the situation. As you may or may not know, I actually worked in a very large church um, and we had seven services on our campus alone on a Sunday. Um, so I myself had to figure out how to navigate these waters, <laughs> figure out how to avoid vocal injury um, during this time. I'm also currently in the middle of getting my master's degree in vocal performance and vocal pedagogy, which is the anatomical and physiological scientific um, study of singing and teaching singing and how to do so in the most healthy way possible. So as you can probably tell, I am incredibly passionate about this um, and I'm so excited to get to share all of this with you guys. So if you're watching this, I'm guessing you are a pastor of some sort or in a ministry of some sort. So, of course, I'm going to go ahead and back up this whole video with some scripture. Um, so, Psalm 78, 72 says, And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, and with skillful hands he led them. David was not only an incredible shepherd or pastor, but the Bible also talks about him leading skillfully. As pastors, we know that who we are the state of our heart, our integrity, the way that we love people, these are the most important things. Um, but second to that, we see over and over again in the Bible that excellence and stewarding our gift well also honors God. So now that I've set up the intent and given you a little background behind this video, let's get into the practical stuff. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna go over with y'all is speaking. Um, so you're probably thinking, okay, I'm, I'm a pastor. I can't, uh, get away from this one. So yes, that is true. And the bottom line is that we are already using our voice so much on this day. So if you can avoid speaking whenever possible, definitely do it. Um, so these are some tips that can really ease that. So one of the first things you can do is reschedule your pastoral conversations for another day than Sunday. I know a lot of times people will try and stop us in the lobby or in the restroom or even in the auditorium after a service. Um, it almost makes it more intentional and more meaningful if you can get somebody's email address, if you can get their phone number and say, hey, can I take you out to coffee during the week? I would love to talk to you more about this then so we can set aside more time. That way you can actually pastor them, invest in them, create a deeper connection with them while also preserving your voice. Speaking of pastoral conversations and lobby time, because of COVID, a lot of us are currently wearing masks in the lobby. Um, be very cognizant that you are probably over speaking when you're trying to speak through a mask. Typically in the lobbies of churches, there is loud music playing. If you are the worship pastor and there's any way that you can turn that down a bit, um, I would say go ahead and do that. <laughs> If you do have to have a conversation, is if it is absolutely crucial, be sure to take that person or those people to a quieter area. Um, if you have like an office or something, try and take them in there. If you are doing a huddle or a devotional before your service, I would say make sure everybody is really, really close together, which is hard uh, right now again during COVID, or use your microphone. That way you're not over speaking. Over speaking will not serve you. That is probably one of the absolute worst things that you can do 
as a vocalist, especially on the day um, that you're actually singing. So just to recap all of those things as far as speaking goes, try and reschedule your pastoral conversations to some time during the week. If you have to talk to somebody, pull them into a quieter area, whether it's an office, a corner, whatever it is, um, just make sure that you're not over speaking. And if you have to do a huddle or a devotional and speak to a lot of people at once, um, make sure that you are doing it with a microphone. The second thing that I want to get into is actually singing. So I'm not going to get um, much into proper technique in this video just because it's so much information and it should be specifically tailored to each vocalist. But what I will say is to warm up and cool down vocally. I know it's super early and I know that it takes extra time, but making the time and putting that in your routine is so, so worth it. I would say start out super chill with like some humming, some lip trills, some breath exercises. Uh, when it's that early, I <laughs> tend to stay in my very like mid-low range for a while before working up and just have like a, like a longer warm up, um, kind of easing myself into it. And not just in the car because when we're in the car, we don't have the proper posture to breathe correctly um, and to warm up those muscles. Even if we are planning to lead from a keyboard that day or be sitting down for whatever reason, it's always a good idea to warm up in a position where you can move around and you're able to feel your breath connect and engage and all of those good things. So when I learn, I always wanna know the why behind what we're doing. Um, and I'm sure it seems fairly obvious, like why do we warm up? But <laughs> just in case, Here's the reason why. So I always notice when I warm up, because we are singing so, so early in the morning, that just easing into it and working up to those high notes that are in most worship songs really, really helps me to preserve my voice over just going for it and straining and tiring my voice out right away. This will also usually contribute to better pitch, better intonation, because a lot of the times whenever we are overcompensating and we're pushing the air through too fast, um, we can end up going sharp in the same way that if we aren't supporting properly and there's not enough airflow, we'll end up going flat. I feel like warming up gives us greater confidence too as singers because <laughs> it's not a surprise. Like you already know what you're getting yourself into. You've already got a feel for your voice that morning and what it's capable of that day. As far as singing and like technique goes, there are obviously other things like straining, having a low laryngeal position, um, you know, releasing the tension here, releasing the tension here, not straining, not reaching, not squeezing, not compressing the vocal folds, all of those things. But I'm guessing if you have a job in this field or um, if you're serving on a team or something, you know how to sing at least decently. So I'm gonna address the other things in this video um, more in depth. But if you do wanna talk about actual technique, I am a total nerd. So um, just message me, DM me, uh, email me, or leave a comment down below. The third thing that I wanna talk about is planning and preparation. Choose songs that suit your voice. Know your voice, know what fits it well, know what keys you sing in, and always make sure that your songs are in the right keys for you. When you're planning the set list, like think about those transitions and the keys and everything like that. Think about the pastoral moments, the exhortation, the times that you're speaking. Think about how that is going to affect you vocally. If you're more of like a charismatic um, leader and you just kind of like go off the cuff, uh, just keep all of those things in mind. Be sure to sing and speak through all of it before Sunday so you can make sure that you're not gonna get fatigued. We are vocal athletes. Your entire body is your instrument because we engage our entire bodies when we sing. It is not just here, it is the entire thing. And just like an athlete has to work out and has to practice and is susceptible to injuries, so are we. So when it comes to practice and preparation, we can't not practice and not warm up for the entire week and then get to church and expect our voices to be in pristine shape. To be a well-oiled machine at all times, we need to constantly be ready. So practice and repetition and planning is crucial and it also aids in confidence because the more times you do something, the more comfortable with it you will be. The fourth thing is to delegate to and develop your team and your vocalists. Let them take some stuff off your plate. This not only helps you vocally, but it also gives you an incredible leadership opportunity as well. When you raise up your team and you call them to greater things and to grow, 
um, you're also strengthening the worship culture at your church, as well as raising up other leaders and not just people that you can delegate things to, but people who you can trust to lead and make decisions when you maybe can't be around. Plus, allowing that opportunity to others gives them a chance to operate and grow in their God-given gift and calling as well. The fifth and final but very important thing is your mix. You want to make sure that your in-ear mix or your monitor mix is solid so that you are not over singing and so that you can hear yourself as well. I always like to make sure that the in-house mix is good too because I'm one of those annoying people that has one ear in and one ear out most of the time, which I know that you are not supposed to do that. But when I can't hear myself, I tend to over sing because I'm trying to sing over an entire band. Again, this can cause pitch problems too. Pushing and over singing usually causes us to be sharp, like I said earlier. So there's no reason to strain, just talk to your audio engineer, get it right. Or if you run your own sound, just spend a little bit more time on that um, just to make sure you get it right, it's worth it. And then try and create a mix that you can actually save for later so that you can manage your time efficiently and honor the time of your volunteers and your contractors. So that is a wrap on my practical tips for avoiding vocal fatigue if you are in worship leadership. If this does help you, please comment down below. Give me your feedback. Give me your like success stories, all the things. Thank you so much again for watching. If you liked this video, please like, comment, share, all of the things. And subscribe to see more videos like these. I love you guys so much. Bye.